Hey doll baddie, so today I wanted to come on here and give you guys a detailed braiding pattern of what you can use when you are trying to install a lace front wig, a 360 wig, full lace wig, or even you wanted to do a frontal sewing. This is the perfect braid pattern that you can do. It's going to keep your install nice and flat and crease, you know, under the weave and all of that so the first thing i'm gonna do is start on my right hand side because i guess i'm a righty so i just start on the right and i'm gonna go ahead and begin doing anchor braids so this isn't really on how to braid um i don't really know how to you know teach y'all how to braid but you're just gonna be braiding going back in the cornrows and the more you keep practicing braiding, the more you're definitely going to get better. So just go ahead and make that parting. And then once you do that, you're going to do the same thing on the other side. And this anchor braid is essential. It's important because it gives you something to sew on. I always sew down my wig caps. So that is what that's good for. Um, if your client wants you to sew down the wig in the back, the, the back, um, anchor braid will have you to have something to sew on like you know you need a braid to sew on so that's is why these are super essential and i learned my anchor techniques from tt wells on youtube um she really mainly does them because she does like a lot of closures and stuff like that so when i would need closure braid patterns that's where i learned that technique from and i just kept on doing it till now and that was what almost three years ago and i'm just being persistent and making sure i always do anchor braids no matter what hairstyle i always do anchor braids like even if the braid pattern switch if i'm doing a closure or whatnot i'm always doing a braid i mean an anchor braid because i need something to sew on especially like for my cap and i just feel like it it's a good protective um it, i don't know like even when you're doing it for like closures and stuff i just feel like it protects your your hairline I don't really know, but what I do know, I, so I just feel like it's essential that you just always do making sure you have anchor braids. And now I'm going to connect the two in this braid pattern. At the end, you will only have one braid. So you're going to have 20, 30, not 30 braids, but 12, 8 braids or whatever, depending on the head shape, size, and how much braids you need. You will end up with only just one. So I went ahead and connected that together and then braid all the way to the end make sure you're braiding going all the way down um in the areas that you see me going braiding all the way down but the only time you really don't need to braid all the way down is once you do the anchor braid going across because you're going to need um to connect connect the other two but for the rest of your braids you're just going to braid them all the way down because you'll be intertwining them into one with each other and you don't want it to be bulky it just makes sense to go ahead and um braid all of it down and you don't want no breakage on the ends and all of that you want to make sure your ends are covered so make sure you're braiding all the way down so doing this um braiding pattern and especially if you're a beginner it's going to take practice um you might feel like you're running into an issue hold on pause let me show y'all how i go ahead and intertwine this together so with the braid y'all see i have my index in my thumb for one of the strands of the braid y'all know it's three pieces of hair for the braid so i'm going to take my other hand and join it with the index in the thumb section of hair and just continue cornrowing down making sure that you're doing it tightly so that it's not loose and you just want to braid all the way going down and um, what was i saying before basically referring to sometimes when you do this you might not feel like your braids are meeting all the way at the end um just keep practicing sometimes i run into that issue that the cornrow won't go all the way at the end of the hair it might stop midway so if that does occur to you and you're running into that issue it's fine you don't have to braid the hair going all the way down but once you do your next cornrow once you get to the same level of where that one stopped at you would just go ahead and intertwine them and then bring the hair into one but you want to keep the one that wasn't able to reach all the way at the end, not braided all the way so that it just flows seamlessly. So when you're doing your parts, making sure that you're attempting or trying to get them as even as possible, that they're reaching all the way at the end of the head so that you're able that you know that you're ensuring that your braids are going to go all the way down and 
if everything would be, you know, semi even. Um, regarding of when it's time to placement to go ahead and intertwine that braid, um, you want to go ahead and it also just really depends on the length of the client's hair the shorter the hair you would actually join more towards the bottom the longer the hair you would start at the more to the top but i would say make sure you don't go over the middle of the hair like the middle crown of the head don't go um past that because you still want the front of your hairline to be flat so when you do inside that frontal or the side part or do your middle part you don't see the bulking of the braids that you were intertwining so don't go up too high that just depends on the length of the hair but if it's the short hair is shorter you will definitely in, um, join connect the hair more towards the bottom so you just go based off the length of the hair and in a previous clip while I was talking um, I was just showing you guys I added two more braids and then I came back on camera to show y'all that I always make sure that my clients part is in the middle um, you definitely always want to ask your client how do you want your hair styled if it's in the middle you definitely make, make sure that your um, braids are in the middle like that the middle braids in the front has a middle part but even if they want a side part just for your own reasoning or preference I just recommend you guys to go ahead and still make sure that you have that middle part the size don't matter because they really don't matter because people not even really wearing like straight style parts anymore everybody do kind of like curved side parts so that really doesn't matter but even if they're not getting a middle part, just make sure to make your life easier and that everything is even because as you see that on the other side, I was able to go ahead and put that in a little ponytail holder while I finish up this one half of the head so that both sides are pretty much, you know, keep it even, you know, keep it symmetrical. So that's definitely very important. So you just want to go ahead and finish one side at a time and then do one half of the head and then you're going to go ahead and work on the other half of the head. So that's just all I'm doing. Um, I did the same thing on the other side. And usually I have the same amount of braids when I do the middle part. The same amount of braids on both sides because I just be end up having it. And I kind of like count as I'm going to just make sure that they're even. I like to keep even. You want to have structure when you're doing, you know, certain kind of things. You don't want to be all over the place. So, yeah. Um... You just go ahead and just keep intertwining um, on the left hand side. You didn't have anything to intertwine because that braid, the anchor braid that was at the bottom, we already put over on the other side. So you start with the new one on the left hand side, bringing it down. And then as you continue, you just begin to um, bring those together. So right now I'm showing y'all we are on the last braid, if I'm not mistaken. No, I'm not. Pause. We're not on the last braid. We're on the second to last braid. But I'm just showing you guys again what I'm doing, my technique of getting that the um the braided hair into the continuous braid that we're trying to um create. I really don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if the explanation is good, but if you guys rewind, watch, pause, and I'm definitely zooming in so you guys can see what I'm doing exactly. Um what you should be doing regarding adding the braid into the other braid so that you only ended up with one braid so this is the last braid that we have so right now it's time to intertwine both sides the left and the right into this one last middle braid so as y'all can see we have one more left well two more left and i'm gonna go ahead and start with the left hand side first being that that's what i'm working on so i have my index and my thumb open ready to go ahead and to, you're gonna need both your hands for this when you're doing it because you got one hand holding and then the other one trying to interlock go ahead and pull it up and then start braiding down um be mindful when uh when you're grabbing up you don't want to add to redo it y'all because i was trying to show y'all multiple times how to do it and i kind of like lost the mojo so i'm gonna go ahead and have to redo and if you do have to redo unravel a little bit and then come back down you know don't just start where you was messing up at unravel and then come back down but be careful of how tight you're pulling up because if you pull up too hard you're going to be putting too much tension on the bottom you know and then when your client puts her head down she's going to be in pain because you have the hair going up and it's just going to be very uncomfortable i know that because i braid my own hair and i do the same exact method and 
sometimes I'd be like, damn, how do I braid my own hair even that tight? So be mindful how tight you are pulling. And in this section right here, y'all just see me add the right end braid to another part that was not connected to y'all know how it's three strands i'm trying to explain it correctly y'all know how it's three strands i already put one in the other one and then you have only two more strands of hair to go ahead and interlock the other one and you just want to braid down and then once you finish braiding you want to definitely make sure you moisturize your client's scalp and i love to use this dual grow mega growth oil is the truth it works real life, so y'all need to invest in that. It's a great oil. And you just want to go ahead and run your fingers through your client's scalp as well. This is most clients' favorite part because it's just so soothing. It feels so good. The coldness on your scalp, you just got a nice, fresh breakdown. But, yeah, make sure you're greasing everywhere. And you could put some grease in the front if it doesn't reach. You don't overdo it doing it on the baby hairs because the wig cap will not stay or stick but that basically sums up this video hope you guys learned something new and you guys try it out and i will check y'all out in the next one if you guys have any comments questions or concerns you already know the deal so go ahead and put that down below bye doll baddies